नमस्ते एवरीबडी जॉय मंगा मक्कर टुडे आई विल बी स्पीकिंग ऑन द इम्पॉर्टेंस ऑफ ज्योतिष इन साधना एंड हाउ फार डज इट वर्क हाउ फार डज इट नॉट वर्क सो ज्योतिष इन इट सेल्फ इज अ वेल एस्टेब्लिश्ड वैदिक process so there is no doubt about it and you should not have doubt about it that it works i will not <clears throat> i will not be going into the details of uh, what makes jyotish work or not which is sh- there should be no doubt about it that it is a valid process uh, valid to the extent that the navagrahas are so important that any uh, basic puja of a devata cannot happen without making some offerings to the navagrahas so this is that important that integral a part of the dharmic puja process okay. now uh, there are at least three different types of uh, there believe to be three different types of uh, karmic uh, repercussions karma phalas that a person has which is reflected in his uh, horoscope uh, which is you know created at the time of his birth in these in these three uh, types of karmas that a person brings along with him or her there is one that is known as the uh, the dhira karma that which cannot be changed then there is one that is partially changeable and partially fixed and one that is changeable so basically Uh, that which is changeable uh, is the one which is actually quite easy to um, easy to uh, you know manipulate by a little bit of will power and little bit of uh, judicious approach towards that specific area of life uh, but suppose uh, that which is slightly more uh, on the on the you know partially fixed and partially unfixed the dhira adhira karma which is known as uh so those can be uh changed by the process of uh application of remedial measures and that is such an integral part of jyotish shastra anybody who knows jyotish should be knowing that mm. you know for different situations for the grahas other things there are deities who can be worshiped things like that and then there is a part of uh horoscope which may or may not be there in all uh individuals but definitely there is some amount of karmic uh, repercussions that an individual brings along which is unchangeable so that part and there are combinations for this uh, that bit of life that area of life where that kind of a karma is involved it cannot be changed by any remedial measures by anything it has to be faced so this is the broad outlook of how the idea of karma phala that one uh, carries forth from past lives from actions performed in past how those uh, shape things that we do today and how far is it possible for somebody to escape that and uh, reshape his life beyond that beyond the impulses or the uh, or the restrictions that are brought forth from past based on the actions that were performed in the past now this also um for a for a large part of the uh, process of sadhana uh, acha w- there is another point that has to be remembered in this regards that uh, unrestricted use of jyotish weakens the mind uh unrestricted means every second day in the morning you wake up and see that what the grahas are trying to tell you that is going to make your will power extremely weak and it is the perfect recipe for debilitating the mind so jyotish was given as a powerful tool uh that gives an indication of how things may shape up and accordingly you are to uh govern your life or at least take judicious decisions based on whether a thing is probable or not probable at this time that kind of an idea and along with jyotish uh, the most important thing is the devata upasana that you are doing that is very very important 
remember this so the moment you step into the zone of sadhana actual spiritual practices and you have been doing this for some period of time and your sadhana has reached a state where the ishta devata whomsoever you are worshipping has started responding to you favorably and has taken you under his or her wing so that is mind you not a thing that happens on day one that takes years of practice of consistent effort of discipline and things like that <clears throat> once that happens then it is very difficult to predict that individual's horoscope very difficult i mean i have seen instances where ordinary uh, astrologers will fail remarkably because it's not the grahas are not working it is just that uh, to quote something that a very fantastic uh, siddha had advised me so beyond the nine grahas there is something that is the anugraha of the devata so if a deity actually takes an individual under his or her wing so ex- accepts an upasaka as um, uh, in a in a format where there is a two way communication between the sadhak and the devata properly that happens uh, then the deity is well capable of uh guiding the individual's life such that the impact of the grahas and even the dhira karmas can uh, if not removed at least bypassed or reduced dramatically so that the effect that it has is much more bearable and there is no way no process no remedy no shortcut in which this can be done this is only and only by the blessings of the deity that happens okay and it is not even something that happens on day 1 by the way it happens after a long amount after years of consistent sadhana and it happens only to a selected few upasakas because even among people who do sadhana uh, it's i do not think that uh, more than 20 25% actually reach that state in one lifetime where they are able to have um, complete blessings and uh, yoga a uh, uh, communion a yoga a siddhi with the devata that they are worshiping it is only then that this comes into play that such an individual's horoscope is nearly impossible to predict uh, it's not that the, as i said it's not that the grahas are not working they are still working but the deity can bypass the effect of the grahas or at least show you a way to overcome the karmic uh, impediments that the graha is placing and prompts you to work in a fashion that uh, it may appear to an individual who's a third party observing this individual's life this upasaka's life that as if he is able to bypass things uh, or even attain things which are not even dictated by a normal reading of the horoscope okay so this is important to remember but also remember that this state is not easy it comes at a very far off condition before that Uh, before that state is reached where one is um, un- completely under the influence of his of of the ishta devata uh, there will always be some impact of the grahas on a person's life so that much you can understand and it is good to not only know but respect this fact and work accordingly so there are times when some things may work better times when something may not work better there is another aspect of jyotish but this is only uh, more exclusive to those who are uh, practitioners of uh, uh, you know or at least delve into this so to understand what combination of grahas are indicated uh, uh, indicative of which deity in a horoscope okay so there is uh, while there is a simple list that is provided uh, in the standard jyotish texts for example uh, which is actually more a method of controlling the effects of the graha so for example if rahu is problematic then one may worship ma durga similarly uh, then various other combinations are mentioned etc but this finding the precise exact form of the deity that is supposed to work best in a horoscope um, and using that knowledge to find ishta devata is a very valid process but it is also a little bit uh, difficult cumbersome and that knowledge is not so easy so while there is a broad idea that this is the nature of the deity that uh, may work in an individual's horoscope but there is also few other factors that need to be taken into account and this is not a full proof process unless the person who is seeing the horoscope has some special abilities 
which is beyond Jyotish. Like some kind of a Siddhi or something like that. So in this situation, how does one find uh, the Ishta Devata? So there is, as I said, of course, the method via Jyotish to which we can get an idea of the Ishta Devata. If not, let's leave Jyotish aside for the moment. If there is a if there is a deity who is worshipped in the family, the Kula Devata, the best option is always to start worship of the Kula Devata. Best option. You do not need to think twice, thrice, nothing. If you are born into a family, born into a Kula, and there is a specific deity who has been worshipped for at least three to four generations, uh, then it is very good to start worship with de- that deity. And regardless of who the Ishtadevata is finally of that individual, yes, it is possible that you may be born into a family where uh, they have a Kula Devata, but your individual Ishtadevata may be somebody different. Even in that situation also, one has to continue worship of the Kula Devata. Kula Devata worship is non-negotiable. If you are aware of who the Kula Devata is, you have to do every year certain minimum amount of worship of the Kula Devata. Oftentimes the Kula Devata is connected to a specific temple um, or uh, there may be a very specific process that is done in the temple uh, which is traditionally followed. So you have to go and do those processes. There is no negotiation in this matter. Kula Devata is absolutely the first deity to approach uh, because without the blessings of the Kula Devata an individual will not take birth in a certain family in a certain setting. Uh, now, for those individuals who do not have a Kula Devata or are not aware of the Kula Devata, there are many families like this where they are not uh, aware of who the Kula Devata is. Uh, in that case, if you are born in, uh, it depends on, uh, uh, in that case, it is slightly more complicated to find who is the Ishta Devata. So, without racking too much of your brain thinking that who is the right deity to worship, should I try this or try that etc uh, use a more rational approach which is that if there is a specific deity whom uh, you like more then you can start with simple upasana of that deity and if you are not aware of any specific deity with whom uh, or you are confused in general about whom to worship then as i have mentioned in earlier videos also start worship with mahaganpati that's the simplest and the straightforward upasana to do okay Mahaganpati is anyway the default deity to worship at least for some period of time helps you clear any kind of blockages that you might have uh, in this path and also if the worship actually matures to a greater depth then Mahaganpati the energy of uh, Ganpati himself can guide you to who the right deity is it may it may just happen that you'll meet somebody who gives you a clue or uh, a dream comes or you get attracted to specific form or a mantra comes from somewhere or you meet a guru something or the other can happen and mind you it is not a thing that happens on day one again everything boils down to discipline patience perseverance and you have to keep doing the practice for some significant period of time before it actually shows uh, a strong result in your life that can bring about a change, a positive change. Uh, for deities, uh, somebody asked uh, specifically, uh, there's a question I received about whether uh, uh, Shiva Upasana can be done in the non-tantric manner. Uh, yes definitely there is no question about it in fact it's wonderful to do shiva upasana in the non tantric manner actually instead of doing it in a uh, the tantric upasana as it stands today is primarily focused on uh, shakti upasana so mm, when you are worshiping shiva uh, you are by default more or less you are talking about sadashiva form that you are worshiping so in that worship uh, you do not need to have any specific Tantra Diksha. You can start with the Shastranama of Shiva, which I have seen is wonderful, extremely potent. Um, this was uh, this is easily available on the internet if you if you were to search. It comes from the Mahabharata, the thousand names of Lord Shiva. Uh, I think it was revealed by Lord Krishna uh, in one of the chapters of the Mahabharata. So this. Uh, 
if worshipped every day or at least on Mondays, ensure that you visit a Shiva temple, you pour, you do a little bit of Abhishekam on the Linga. If you are allowed to touch the Linga, if not, you can offer, make some offerings to the priest who can then offer it to the Shiva Linga. And then sit and chant this thousand names of Shiva. And you continue doing this practice for at least two to three years, it is going to bring a remarkable change. If you are specifically a Shiva devotee, there is nothing better to start off than this. One of the best processes. I mean, if you are, if you know, if you have a Shivalinga uh, whom you can do pasana off, and you are aware of the Rudram, if you can chant the Rudram, that's wonderful. But if not, for other people, doing the thousand names of Shiva is absolutely uh, very, very potent. When, but again, it has to be done consistently for a period of two to three years. And the blessings that you receive, one of the most uh, powerful things that the blessings of Lord Shiva does to an individual is to make his or her mind very steady in the worship, very steady. And the steadiness of the mind allows you to do dharana of just about any deity you want. And not just do dharana, but it allows you, it makes your mind more concentrated. Thereby, any mantra sadhana you do after that, any other type of sadhana, or you apply your mind in any secular activity, non-religious activity, there too, it works uh, sort of, it acts as a blessing and it allows you to um, receive much better results than what a scattered mind would allow you to have. So this is the first, the most primary blessings that Shiva Upasana does to an individual. And uh, as I had mentioned in, in the Adhyatmikta page in Facebook, so for those individuals who suffer from depression and other psychological problems, Shiva Upasana is by default one of the best things to do. On Mondays, visit a Shiva temple, pour water on the Shiva Linga, pour Bail Patra on the Shiva Linga, milk, the other regular things that you take for Abhishekam, uh, do all that, sit down, chant the thousand names of Shiva, come back. Keep doing this every Monday, every Monday. Do it for three to four months and you will start seeing results. You will start seeing how it acts on your mind, how it changes your perspective, how it makes you steadier and how if there are other psychological issues that you have been facing or anybody has been facing for that matter, uh, the blessings of Shiva actually help to reduce these problems. He is the one who has the moon on his forehead. So this actually is a very effective remedy uh, for any type of fears or uh, you know depression specifically those things so with this i'll end the video here today so basically if you have again recapping if you are confused about your ishtadevata then start with ganpati if there is a specific form of deity whom you like uh, you can start chanting the ashtottara nama or a simple stotra of the deity but important thing is you have to continue for significant period of time before it matures and it shows a certain positive result in your life that's very important however uh, one caveat i need to mention that if you are attracted to a mahavidya which is a, and specifically if one of the uh, more intense mahavidyas be it ugratara form of matara or bagalamukhi devi or chinnamasta or that kind of mahavidyas then definitely it is best to Try and get an initiation from some authentic place and then only do the sadhanas because do uh, uh, you know stotra part or things like that because even the stotras of these devatas can have a certain very strong energy and very often at the initial stages for upasakas they are not aware of they do not have a correct assessment of what their true capacity is what they can you know safely digest and what they cannot digest. Uh, so with that, I'll end the video here. Jai Makamak.